I just experienced this specific word that God will organize situations for you to speak what the blood is speaking. That means people that will do something wrong, sometimes they will do it against you <laughs> so that you'll have the opportunity to speak for forgiveness, speak for, th yeah, that what is from him. Hello? Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Amen. So when that trial is coming, that through the blood of Christ you will speak. You are, God is teaching you how to speak through the blood. Speak what the blood is speaking. Amen. Let that be so for our lives. That we come more and more and more and more into that place. Hallelujah. I'm sharing with you from James 4. Please go with me. Supposed to be a few scriptures, but this morning we only did the one. So maybe tonight also, I don't know. Let's see what God wants to do. James 4. Hallelujah. From verse 6. But he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. He gives us more grace. He opposes the proud. What does that mean? It means God is actively, actively working against you. He's opposing. He's not just ignoring and walk away. He opposes you. When I oppose you, I am with my energy. I am with a decision. I am busy. I'm seeing you and I'm opposing you. I'm coming against you. And I saw that. I just said, okay, Lord, forgive me, please. <laughs> Help me. That pride will not be the center point. No, and we all can say, no, I'm not, I'm not full of pride. Pride is the focus on the self, on the me. Now, you did me wrong, therefore I. That's pride. You did that, therefore I. Instead of you did that, therefore the word says that, and therefore I'm guided by the Spirit to do that. That's the humble. <sighs> Easier said than done. But that is the word. And I choose to respect the blood. I choose to respect God's grace. Or I choose to respect my pride. And it's not easy when we get hurt. It's not easy when we are disappointed. Even in ourselves. God must help us. God must help us. But if I did wrong and now I'm trying to prove that I can do it right. That's pride. That's false humility. It's pride. I mean, performance, I must do it right now. But it's still me. It's still me that must get the 10 out of 10. <sighs> so I feel better. I've been there, done that many times. God help us in Jesus' name to be set free. Amen? Amen? Come on. God opposes the proud. It's an active action from God against you. So that's not just the devil waiting for you to fall. Because according to the word, the devil is excited because according to the word, that man must fall because the devil, devil knows God's word works. The word of God works. He knows that. So he's excited when you are in pride. When he sees that God is opposing you. He's opposing that he's not, not loving you. But he cannot have that what is not from him in his presence. So it must be pushed aside. It must be pushed aside. Hello? So with God in me, I can trust God also to, with him, push aside that what is pride. Because my spirit, in my spirit, there's no pride. So from the beauty of humility in my spirit, with God's help, with the Holy Spirit, and the beauty in my spirit, I can push the pride out of my soul, out of my emotions, out of my thought patterns, out of my opinions, out of all those. I can push it out to say from my spirit, I oppose the pride in my soul. Can we do that? Well, not so. So I, if I can do that, hallelujah, then the pride will fall. <laughs> okay. Are you with me? 
Good evening. Are you with me? So please, let us go with that. We didn't say it like that this morning. But if God opposes the proud, then the capacity from heaven is in my spirit to stand against pride. And pride, I can win. I can win this pride in my soul with my opinion or my thought pattern or what I feel what is right. And even when I'm successful, I can be full of pride. If, some, if I serve and somebody didn't say thank you, if I served and they... And when somebody blamed me for something I never did, what are you going to do? When I came to Bible school in, for the second year, I worked in, in Pretoria for a year and a half to pay off a lot of studies. I went for a week fasting and prayer in the mountains. I can't even remember where. And God said to me, next year, when you go to Bluefontein, people, there will be people, they will lie about you. They will talk behind your back and they will do certain things. And God said, what are you going to do? Hello? So God wants to prepare us many times. What are you going to do? So God knew about that, but he, he was looking forward for me to have an excellent, correct reaction by the Spirit. So when I came to Bluefontein and things went it was heavily wrong. And the people from Pretoria had the biggest lot of thank you, praise the Lord. A lot of stories. Yeah, that side will be maybe better, eh? <laughs> Wisdom. <laughs> okay. So what did I want to say? Um, okay. In any case, so a lot of things. The one pastor told me, Ish, the leader, the apostolic leader that was my spiritual father. He just told the guys, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He just, he just told them that you guys are talking nonsense. And at the end of the day, a lot of guys came back and even said sorry. But at that moment when it happened, and I realized even a lot of guys Suddenly, didn't, they didn't speak to me. They were not open. I was okay. Didn't take rejection. I didn't not forgive. I didn't stand with issues because God showed me and that he's going to use that in my life. Many times you must ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, how are you going to deal with the pride in my life? How are you going to deal with the pride in my life? Because if I don't do that, I will be caught of God. Is that the word? I know you know this story also, two and a half of you. But when I was singing in the David song group and we were singing and God had a breakthrough from self-consciousness to uh, technique consciousness. And then I realized I need to sing more accurately and then... To God consciousness, I can sing and don't focus on the word, don't focus, but just focus on God. Where must I point? Where must I smile? What must I do? At the end of the song, end of the, uh, the, the, the ministry, I must go to that guy afterwards and say this and this and this to him. But this while I'm singing the words of the song. But then also the pride came in. You're busy with this, you're singing the song, and sometimes not from the heart, and you're singing the song to the Lord. And, but you're busy with other things, and that's pride. When you sing this song, when you worship God and you're busy with other things, it's pride. It's plain pride. That there's a more focus on something else than on God, when you're actually speaking to God. There's arrogance and pride. So I was singing the song. Who knows that uh, example? No. One, two, three. Okay, and so at the end of the song, it's this uh, thing with this beat, ba 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 ba, whatever. And you must sing it's Afrikaans, met alles wat ek is, alles wat ek het, gee ek eer oor Heer. And when I said met alles, I realized it's not the way alles must be. I'm too early. So I said met alles, met alles, met alles. And even by the third one, it was totally wrong. So it was me and another guy singing. He just went like this. <laughs> I started to laugh. You know, I was the only one laughing. 
And the whole hall, everybody was just like this. The sound mean, man. <laughs> it just went like that. And God was dealing with the pride. Hello. Don't wait till then, okay? So I was standing there and said, okay, Lord, forgive me. Help me. What must I do now? And God will not shame you. He will deal with you, but he will not shame you. So God give, gave me this idea. So I said, you know, many times through our lives we want to sing the song unto the Lord. And we are focusing, but then we sometimes get, lose our focus. And we, what we bring forth is not accurate. You know, like this song that I sang, and then at the end of the day I lost track of certain things. And so we lose track on certain things. What's happening in our lives because of the tensions and the, the, the pressures. And I went on and on and on. Nearly made an altar call. Afterwards, some of the teachers, wow, that was such an excellent example, the thing that you did there. I wanted to say thank you, but then I told them the truth. I had to tell them the truth. But what I'm saying is, my brother, when God deals with you, even in front of people, he will not shame you. But he wants you to deal with that pride. Okay? Okay, thank you. You have it. God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Favor is talking about grace in the beginning of the verse, but he gives us more grace. Grace is not just I'm saved from hell, I'm missing hell. If I'm in trouble, I've asked for forgiveness, then I'm not in trouble anymore. No, 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 no. Grace is also my enablement. God enables me. Amazing grace, that's how sweet the sound. Amazing enablement. There we have it. Amazing enablement that God made here, me a child of God. Is that true? Hello? Okay. So, he shows favor to the humble. When I can position myself to be humble, I will not be humiliated. God will not shame me unless I will just push with this pride against him then I will be humiliated because pride can be for the fall. But if there's pride, I can come with humility and confess. I don't have, need to have the curse of pride to come to a fall. I need the repentance when I'm in pride to come and humble myself. Amen? And that humility will protect you. That humility, my brother, my sister, will protect you against all these things. Humility will give you the capacity to carry success. So let's say humility will give me the capacity to carry success. Because that I will not start to walk in pride. I will not start to walk in a lot of other things. When somebody hurt me, when I walk in humility... I will have the capacity to not just get over it, but to love that person again and forgive him and not having now an opinion about him because of what? Pride is broken over my life. Humility. I have the opportunity to forgive. I have the opportunity to respect the blood. I have the opportunity to show and to proclaim that the blood speaks of forgiveness, that I forgive you as God has forgiven me. You remember what we said? Lord, forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us. So what did we say? We said, God, in the way that we forgive someone, forgive us in that way. Not in the other way. So Jesus told the guys, the way that I forgive that man, in that way, we ask that you forgive me. That's the Lord's prayer. Hallelujah. God is going to help all of us. Amen. He shows favor to the humble. He's there to help you. Submit yourselves then. So what can you do? When you are humble, when you break with this pride in your life, you can submit yourselves then to the Lord. Satan submit himself also to the Lord. When you drive out that devil, it must go. In the name of Jesus, he, sub, he submits himself. Hello? 
But this is coming from a place of worship, where I come as a humble, humble in heart. I will submit, yes, yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. I have there for you, if you can write there, Matthew 16, verse 24. He says, submit to God. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, first of all, deny yourself. Submit to me. Humble yourself. Deny yourself only through the cross of Christ. You can do it accurately. Deny yourself. Secondly, take up your cross. Not all the burdens you need to carry. Your cross, no, your identity through the cross of Christ. Take up your identity through the cross of Christ. After you said, my identity is rotten rubbish. I need to burn in hell. I lay it down at the cross of Christ. And I take up the new identity that God has given me. Hello? And with that, I will follow. Uh, with that, I will follow. So in that sense, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Why will he flee? Because there's more of God. He cannot stand in the presence of God. Not here. More of the light, less of the darkness. You just walk in the light. You just put yourself in the light. You just find stature in the light. And darkness must flee. Don't get a fight with the enemy. Don't go into this fight with darkness. Get into the light. Amen. Let's say, I will not fight the darkness. I will embrace the light. Hallelujah. Come near to God and he will come near to you. So if you don't perform, God will not come. No, 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 that's not what it says. Come near to God and he will come near to you. The day that you gave your life to Christ, you came near, you opened up. And in the opening up, I'm, I'm coming to you. God, will you please come and live in me? So when you come, the first time that you came to him, and you just... Mentioned. You didn't know the gospel, man. The, the motives, there, there were such a lot of things wrong in your life and in my life. But the fact that we came, when you came, he was immediately there. And he came in. Amen? That is the biggest miracle of your life. But so for every facet, the fear, the anxiety, the stress, the, the issue. If you allow God, God, come and deal with this thing, please. He will come in. Bring that area closer to him. Open it up for him. And in that, you are drawing to him, and he will. He promised he will draw near to you. He says, wash your hands, sinners. Purify the hearts, double-minded. Grieve, mourn, wail. Change your laughter to mourning, mourning, and your joy to gloom. What, what does that mean? You must get pessimistic. You must just sit on a heap and... And whatever. No, that's not what it is saying. First of all, wash your hands, you sinners. What I do with my hands, what I do with my hands, the work of my hands will not be my God. The work of my hands will not be my God. Amen? But my hands will honor him. My hands will work where he is working. So what I do, if I serve, if I play the piano, if I play the guitar, if I worship, if I write, if I whatever I need to do, then God will help us. Amen? Are you with me? Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts. Purify your hearts. Hello? In the purifying of the hearts. Ach, you all were, were small. Meh. <laughs> okay. What am I saying? Purify your hearts. Yeah. Same also. Purify your hearts so that your hearts will be a clean vessel. God wants to speak into your heart. In your heart you are dreaming and you want your heart and his heart to dream together. But with pure, a pure dream, a beautiful dream. But he as father wants to share that beautiful dream with you as his son, as his daughter. But for that I need to become pure. But if my heart is so easily in an issue, if somebody just talk wrong, if somebody just don't greet you, or if somebody talk down to you, or if somebody just had this, 
Just like that. If you purified your heart, it cannot so easily just be changed. But if it's just, I did a little bit something to my heart, and then just something dropped there, the heart manifest. Whoa, there's quite a lot of impurity in there. You need to purify your heart because your heart cannot, can easily mo respond more to issues and things that people do than what your heart can respond to his heart. But when there's the issue, I will not respond until he responds. Because my heart, impurity is connected with his heart. So when he responds, I will. That one guy that just swear at me and he blah, 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 a lot of things and he said you are doing this you are doing this and i said no you and the guy took me like that and he put me on the bed i said god and god said to me i didn't tell you to speak <laughs> i had to keep quiet it doesn't matter this man went on in my face and he did this and i was he was just swearing and belittling until it was uncomfortable because I didn't react. And uh, after everything was silent, I just thought, God said, speak now. And then major thing happened. And most of the group next evening gave their lives to Christ. <sighs> that be silent when God says, be silent. And you need to practice that. You need to practice that in your time with God. You need to practice that when you feel the turmoil or you experience the turmoil. Then you shut it down and you sit with God and say, I will not put all this rubbish in my heart. No, I will not allow all this rubbish. My heart is not a rubbish bin. But you can only put the rubbish in if you present your heart as a rubbish bin. Then the enemy can throw anything against you, how people will do you wrong, and you'll see this wrong in that guy, in your husband or in your wife, in your leader, in the guy that you are discipling, in the one that you are serving, in the one that, ah, and you will suddenly more, 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 see more wrong and how they do this wrong and do that wrong because you presented your heart as a rubbish bin, as a dustbin. And the enemy can just throw it in. You know, like that guy sitting far and throwing it in, you know, and it's just, phew, it's in there. <laughs> Whatever message the enemy has for you. No. Present yourselves to the Lord. Amen. And your heart will respond to him. I, I need to grow in this. I hope and believe you will also make that commitment tonight. Amen. Wash your hands. Purify the hearts. Double-minded. Double-minded. James 1 says, don't even think. Don't waste your time by praying, thinking that you will receive anything from God. He says, if you, need, if you lack wisdom, ask for wisdom. But if you are double-minded, double-hearted, double-minded, you are like a wave tossed in the sea. That's something like that. No? And uh, he says, it's a waste. Don't even waste your time to pray. Or to think that you will receive from God. Ish. Grieve, mourn, well, change your laughter into mourning and your joy into gloom. <laughs> but the joy of the Lord is my strength. And you must be positive. You must think positive. <laughs> no, it's not the moaning, the negativity, the sitting in depression, the, the discouragement, this, this thing of, I cannot anymore. It's a beauty of brokenness. Where there's really a brokenness in me. There's really a, God, I'm sorry for what I did. I'm not just want to apply the blood, ch -ch -ch, and there we go on, forgiven. No, this says it must be genuine. When he says, grieve, mourn, wail, change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Prophets many times said that. All that the prophets, prophets meant by that was, be genuine in your repentance. Let it be brokenness before the Lord. Because God is near the broken in heart, the word says. And when you come in brokenness, you come with humility. And what will God do? He will lift you up. Is that not the next verse? Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. So when you come with true, true genuine repentance... 
and brokenness before the Lord. And you humble yourself in that place of worship, in that place of focusing on Him, focusing on Him. He will come and He will lift you up. He will lift you up into that what He has for you, that you will be successful in the dream that He has for you. You will go from strength to strength. You will go from glory to glory. You will be the overcomer. You will be. People will follow the, the gold that you bring forth through your mouth and through your life. It will happen, but you will be protected by humility. Humility. Humility will give you the capacity to have success. Where success will not be the curse. That success, prosperity, and all those things is so dangerous. For the rich man, Jesus said, it's, it's not easy to get into the kingdom of God. But humble yourself. Humble yourself. You put your riches in, in what you have. You put no. You put your heart in what you have. The rich young man. Humble yourself. Sell everything. <laughs> Humble yourself. And then come and follow me. I don't think for the rest of his life, God said, now you will be poor. You will have nothing. You will have, have to ask people to eat something. No, I don't think that was his heart. But there was such a lot of pride in the success of that rich young man. God, one day when I have that, and God says, I've prepared you so long already so that you can carry that without that to become a curse. Hello? So with many breakthroughs, many blessings, many things, I'm not talking, I don't preach this prosperity uh, teaching, but I'm saying with so many blessings, so many breakthroughs, God is waiting for you to come with true, genuine repentance about your life and true humility. Say, God, I, I not just submit, I'm not submitting like the devil, I'm submitting with, wow, you are awesome. There is none like you. I'm nothing without you. You are my life, you're my passion, you're my desire. You are the one. You are the reason for living. You are my motivation. I'm captivated by your beauty. Hello? And out of that perspective, I come with brokenness, humility, and I submit because I respect who he is. And I know whatever he has for me, it's only the best, exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can think or pray, the word says. Is that true? God, come and do what you want to do in our lives. God, I pray for every man and woman, for me, myself, all of us, Lord, our families, our children. Have mercy on us, Lord. Holy Spirit, show us the areas where we are focusing on ourselves and our hurts, our disappointments, our successes, and where it's the foundation is pride and that whole thing can fall and become a curse in our lives, Lord. Show us, Lord, in your love so that we will not destroy our lives, Lord. We don't want to destroy our lives. We want to deny the life that is not from you. God, help us and arrest us to see and to run with humility into that where you will surprise us when we come with true, genuine humility before your throne. In that place, God, you touch us. And I pray that you will touch every man and woman here, even as they go, even as we work through this teaching further at home and in this week. I pray that it will become a foundation. I pray that it will be established for the rest of our life, for our lifestyle to be different. Please, Lord, help us with that. We trust you for that in Jesus' name. And all say... Amen. Amen.